If I'm in a position to make someone else feel guilty, or if we want to talk about shame, if I'm in a position to make someone look guilty, then I am in the dominant position in a power relationship. I've taken on something of the uh, aura of a judge. I asked yesterday whether or not that was a danger to me, if that has the capacity to corrupt me or to cause me to become intoxicated. There's something delicious about power, something that we as human beings like about power. Um, and there's a lot that we will do in order to get it. What will people not do to get power? <laughs> uh, Open a history book. Read the newspaper. You'll see what people will do to get power. Now, when we have that reality, that reality of some sort of, I dare say, original sin in us. In other words, every time that we try to impose our will upon someone else or to try to alter the way someone else is, we do so at a risk to ourselves, i.e. the risk of becoming corrupted by the power relationship that inevitably ensues, we run the risk of falling prey for something that is in our fundamental nature, Fall, falling prey to something that is in our fundamental nature. How can we be sure that when we're helping helping someone else, we are doing so in order to help them and not to satisfy our desire for power. <laughs> it's time we all looked in the mirror, I think. That to me is the problem with guilt and shame. They can be wielded. Wielding these things creates a power dynamic. Power corrupts. 